All right, I'm uh, making this video because um, I was using Anarchy Arcade and I could figure out how to like spawn cabinets and stuff. And I could spawn my Steam games just fine, but I couldn't get like Arcade and Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis stuff to work at all. Uh, and it was giving me a freaking headache. So um, I figured it out and I'm gonna go ahead and show that to you. All right, so. Um, this is, uh, this is the Flynn's map, which I'm going to put the link probably in the video description. But, um, yeah, so, like, when I came in, like, I added all this stuff earlier. But when I first started, like, I figured out how to, you know, make cabinets, change the videos, which you, uh, what you do is you go through an um, empty spot. Like, let's just start here. Hit the middle mouse button, and then you just pick a file. So let me look at my Steam library, and I'm going to put something down just to do this really quick. There you go. Um, how about Poker Night 2? So what you do is you have the search bar here. So you put in Poker Night. That's going to show up right there because that's in my library. And I can go ahead and spawn this. Uh, if you want to change types of cabinets, what you do is um, you unlock them from the tickets menu, which is something I'm probably going to show in the video and you just scroll your mouse wheel, which kind of sucks, but you just scroll through until you find whatever you want. And you just put it down, you can hold E to rotate stuff. It also keeps you in place, which is kind of useful, I guess. I usually just try to get everything like lined up together so it doesn't really matter too much. And you can hold uh, Shift and use the mouse wheel to make the machine bigger and smaller. So that's pretty neat. Don't know what size that is, this is the normal size. So we'll put this right here. And now when you go up to it, what you do is you click on it, and it usually takes you to this part. Now, obviously I was born in 1901. I don't even know if this is going to matter or not. Let's skip this. But uh, so the big thing to know is that this is what it takes you to. And if you actually want to launch it, what you do is you click this button here, and it'll open the game in a separate um, instance. Like it'll open the game and put this game in like a low resource mode. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. But the thing is, is um, Steam games have no issue of running because they're built into Steam. But if you want to have, say, something like I have Gauntlet here, which is running in a MAME emulator, you have to set up MAME to work. So my other problem was uh, what you do in that case is that you would go, instead of using any of this stuff here, you click on Browse, and then you go to the zip file. Let me see if I can add this window. I can't even find this on here. Well, whatever, I'll capture my second monitor, I guess. Just a second. <laughs> monitor number two. Great. So, all right. This is going to be really weird trying to show this and minimize that stuff back here. So, I'm just focus on this. Great. All right. So, right here, this is um my emulator folder. So, what I did is I just put everything in the C drive. You don't have to do that. But um, in this case, let's uh, let's pick an arcade game. So, I'm going to arcade main to my ROMs folder. And what I was doing before was I was clicking on this. Do you actually go to the ROM itself? And then you uh, just go through and pick one. Of course, I legally own all of these games here. I have a gigantic mansion that's just full of arcade machines. So let's put in, I don't know, Mappy? That's a thing, right? All right, great. So, OK, now I'm going to go back. I'm going to close this. We're going to go back to the game. All right, so right here, this is a drop down menu. Uh, it's only showing me a few things. I'm going to show you how to expand that. So uh, I'm going to click on name. It doesn't really matter what the type is. And this is going to put this wherever I drop this down at. Now, then it opens up this, so you just pick a game or whatever that matches your description, and it just gives you some default artwork. Usually the artwork is uh, it's pretty lame. <laughs> like, this isn't the uh, marquee that was from the machine, and that's definitely not the image that you know, you'd want to have on there. So you can click on this, go to edit item, and adjust whatever you need to in here. 
Um, for me, I usually just go in here and I'll just hit Shift Tab, open up the Steam browser, do a search for whatever the game is, put that in there. Let's find some images that look okay. All right, so since this should be set up okay, what should happen is when I hit this here, this is going to go to this screen here, and on my end, what I'm seeing uh, is it actually loaded the emulator itself. It's a bit of a pain to try to capture all of that, so I went ahead and closed it. All right, so that's great because I have it set up. That doesn't really help you. So let's go ahead and delete this. So uh, the biggest thing I had to do that was driving me crazy is that all it was showing me was um, standalone things which means it just opens the file in Windows, which isn't useful for anything. And it was just showing me uh, Steam items, which you know launches Steam games, which is why I had all these machines here. This is all stuff in my Steam library, but it wasn't letting me do any emulator stuff. So uh, let's go up stairs. Let me go up here. All right, so I finally figured out how to get these. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit escape. Going back to the main menu. Uh, when it finishes loading. All right, so you have tickets, which is where you go to unlock different types of cabinets. You get tickets just from basically being in and making shortcuts and stuff. Um, but what you're really looking for here is the options, and you wanna to go to manage add-ons right there. Now this is gonna show you all the workshop stuff that I'm subscribed to or you're subscribed to. Um, mountable games, these are games that I guess either other people did or officially supported, whatever that means. You got this thing here, and then you have these down here. These are emulators that are already built in. This is in your, um, uh, it's a folder in Anarchy Arcades folder called Apps, I think. Um, I had to manually make this one, this was a headache. But see how none of these have check marks beside them. If I want these to show up in here, you have to add check marks. Now, at the moment, I don't really have many emulators installed. Uh, I do have the SNES though, so since this is selected, it's on right there. So what you would do is you would just go here, pick a spot. Let's go ahead and browse for a game. Um, give me a second. I'm doing this as we speak. And the good thing is, is that this already has like the extension set up. That's not too hard to set up. Uh, What's, uh, what's everybody's favorite Genesis game? How about a uh, Contra? No, wait, Super Nintendo Contra 3. There we go. So this is going to open up with this, which I'm picking from this drop down menu because I enabled that. It's an SNES game. Um, you have to download cabinets from the workshop. So I usually just use the Steam boxes, which is why this is here, because I'm lazy. <laughs> it doesn't take much time to do, but. That's how lazy I am. Let's uh, put this on this cabinet here. All right, so we're gonna go pick on this right there. So that's saved. This has a little picture on it now. And all right, so what's gonna happen for me is if I click on this, I'll do this and it will usually play a video if I had the video set up, but if I click play, right now it opened the game for me, which is the issue that you're probably having. So to get all of this stuff working, once you enable the SNES shortcut, what you're gonna do is um, when you add the zip or SMC file, like you spawn the game based on your zip file or your SMC file, not the actual emulator. Um, you middle click on it, go to edit. Now you can left click on the screen to make the screen full screen so this is easier and then you're going to click on manage here and this is where you're going to actually go in and you want to change this right here to wherever your um emulator is located your emulator's exe so mine is in here because i don't know <laughs> and uh, i also have a path to my roms just to make sure they all load correctly which this is exactly where the roms are for me uh, the commands, if this is set up, this is what you want it to say. What that means, it's going to um, open the emulator and then it's the same thing as running a shortcut in Windows. So this is the important thing right here and making sure that you set up your directory. And then once you do that, you should be good to go. 
again, like if I had put a video here, which I'll go ahead and do that really quick just to illustrate that. I'm going to go in. Let's see if we can capture my first monitor. So you can see all of this. Great. All right, Steam. Go away, guy. Ah, whatever. All right, so I have this. Um, let's go look for country three. Click on here. Go to video. I usually just pick the first video that pops up. Um, because of the way that Google works now, you usually have to click on the link or the link won't work, right? Great. Uh, so I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna edit, and I'm going to click on this. Scroll down to trailer. Drop that in, and now. Oops, close this video. I click on this. If this works okay, it's gonna start playing the video. Now, this is kind of a pain. I can scroll down and get rid of the little pop up down there. Or you, again, you can left click and you can actually go full screen on this. So, hopefully, that helped you a bit. I know that was a big headache for me and freaking getting this thing here to work. That was a whole other battle. I kind of had to make my own um, app for it. But, uh, alright. Hope this helps you, and, uh, bye bye.